we will discuss the meld string experiment the aim of the experiment is to determine the frequency of an electric vibrator the apparatus includes an electric vibrator to one end of the vibrator we have tied up a string and the other end we have a mass span and uh, we can uh, give mass or we can place masses into that mass span so that we can vary the tension in the string when we switch on the vibrator the vibrations of the vibrator will be fed to the string in this is the longitudinal mode of vibrations because the uh, vibrations are fed to the string uh, in the along the direction of the string so this is actually the longitudinal mode of vibration standing waves will be produced on the stretched string and as you zoom in you can see there are regions of maximum amplitude and that is called as the anti nodes and regions of minimum amplitude and that is called as the nodes we have placed 5 grams at in the mass span and we have obtained the loops so here we have obtained the first loop second third and the fourth loop but in this experiment we have to uh, we should have only the de uh, de well defined number of loops so we avoid the first and the last loop so we'll take we will avoid the first and the last loop so now we have the number of well defined loops as 1 2 so we have two well defined loops in our experiment after counting the number of well defined loops we have to measure the distance of this loop or the length of the loops so for that we have to uh, just measure the distance between the two pointers using a meter scale so we'll measure the distance so this is how you measure the distance so towards the end we can see that the length of the loop is 97 cm so this is our tabular column so first we have to enter the mass of the pan and that is provided in your lab manual itself and then you have the mass on the pan so here as per our experiment we have given 5 grams so you have to write 5 over here and then you have to calculate the length of the well defined loops so we had 97 cm that was the length of the well defined loops and the number of loops is 2 so from here you can find out the length of one loop so that becomes small l and then you can you have the total mass capital m so m by l square will give you uh, you can find out m by l square now to repeat the experiment we can we have to vary the mass on the pan the mass of the pan will remain a constant but on varying the mass on the pan you can do the repetitions so as we vary the mass on the pan the number of loops and also the length of the well defined loops will vary but finally towards the end the m by l square value will remain a constant so you can take the final m by l square value the average of the m by l square value and then you can substitute into this equation n is equal to square root of g by m m by l square where uh, m is actually the mass density and every, and that everything is given inside the manual itself so when you en enter all these values you get the frequency of the vibrator in hertz we will have a quick review of what we have learned so far so standing waves will be produced in a stretch string when it is set into vibration by a vibrator and uh, our aim is to find out the frequency of this vibrator so as we have seen in our experiment we could observe nodes and anti nodes in our experiment and the observations are we have the length of the string which is given the mass of the string is also given and from these two data you can calculate the linear density the mass of the pan has to be measured and the acceleration due to gravity is given now the tabular column uh, the entries has to be made like the mass of the pan has to be measured the mass on the pan q is 5 grams as we have did in our experiment so we can calculate the total mass also we have found out that the length of the well defined loops is 97 cm and the number of loops is 2 so from there you can calculate the length of the loop and from there you can calculate m by l square now we can repeat this experiment by varying the mass on the pan 
so as we vary the mass on the pan the total mass m will be varying and also the length of the loop and also the number of loops will vary but finally m by l square will always remain a constant so we can find out the mean value of m by l square and then you can substitute in the equation for frequency that is n is equal to root of g by m into m by l square so our final result we can uh, obtain that is the frequency of the vibrator in hertz thank you